Hi guys, been playing with the ESP8266 the magical Wi-Fi module right here. Uh, basically, it puts uh, any device you want on the internet, on Wi-Fi, on wireless. So currently, what I have uh, set up here is I have two devices. I have a button, and I have an LED, and both of them are controlled, or it goes back and forth from here. So if I press the LED on, it turns on. Press it off, it turns off, turns on, whatever. And uh, if I read the button, uh, when I don't press it, actually it's a one, it's kind of backwards, but you'll see what if I press it, it's actually a zero. If I release it, it's a one again. So it seems so simple, but it took a long ways to get here. Um, and I'm still not quite where I want to be. I want to be able to uh, press the button and affect the web page right away. So uh, I know how to push it to the web server, but I have not figured out uh, a way to push it from the web server to the web page. So maybe uh, some of you guys, uh, web gurus, can help me with that. But uh, let's see. Yeah, let's talk a bit about the components itself. The device is the this guy right here. It's wire completely wireless. All the wires you see here is actually uh, not really necessary. Uh, the the FDDI is necessary for debugging purpose, but once it's working, you can unplug that. And the power here is uh, this is just power from the wall work, which of course could be battery operated also. And as you can see, there is no Arduino to be found. This is everything you see here is the whole device. So this could be a, a switch, a door switch, or a window switch for an alarm, or this could be a, a servo that opens the garage door or something. So it, it, it goes both directions, uh, in and out. And typically, this used to require an Arduino and an Ethernet card, uh, I mean, an Ethernet shield. But both of these have been replaced by that guy for $3. So, I already mentioned that this is uh, only needed for developing and the browser is could be anywhere in the world. And then the next piece is this Node.js server, which we'll talk in a, bit, in a second. Let's see, I got a map, okay, here it is. So this is what all the pieces are. Uh, you already saw this piece here, and the FDDI, those are the two pieces right here. And then there is a PC, which I am using to de for development, so that use I sometimes use cool term and I also got a little carried away I wrote this little thing that allows me to communicate with the ESP so I could do things like list all the files that is on the ESP so I got a couple files there I could run any, any program that's on the ESP load it up I could uh, execute commands mm -hmm. like uh, so if I clear this I say execute that it will tell me the IP address of the ESP the module um, I can restart it and things like that so anyway yeah this is only for development like I said so using these pieces right here I could actually control that and debug and things like that upload programs so he talks directly to the internet wirelessly through through Wi-Fi and then typically what happened in the, a lot of the samples I see is this one right here which is the web browser anywhere in the world will talk through the internet through one device. Uh, this is a sample that we, we saw on uh, Hackaday, the, the, the guys on in Barcelona. So basically, he connects this to the door and then um, the browser um, could query the uh, state of the door. Or some of the other t demos I've seen, they actually use this an existing website, such as ThinkSpeak, um, to actually the web browser will send the data, I'm sorry, the device will send the data to ThinkSpeak and ThinkSpeak will save it on a database and stuff and allow and serve the page containing the data as a, as a uh, chart and things like that. So the browser sees the data that has been processed by this. What I want is I want complete control so I want the browser not talk directly to the device because I want to be able to talk to multiple devices and so it requires this middle piece which could be an extra website but this piece here has been uh, currently replaced by Node.js which I'll talk in soon here so that's uh, so yeah normally instead of going from the web browser directly to the device we are now going from 
the web browser to the web server here running Node.js as a web server and then um, the web server itself is the one that actually goes through the internet again wirelessly again talk to the ESP again so that's the big picture so let's talk a bit about why I picked Node.js um, I picked it because it's free I didn't want to pay for it and there's tons of tutorials I didn't know much about it but I follow all, all kinds of tutorials there's tons of YouTube videos and tutorials online and it requires basically no special tools it just a web I mean a, a text editor is all you need and I'll show you the actual guy right here so you basically open a PowerShell uh, a shell window and then you uh, let it break control spaces and you download this node.js and then once you done download that then you have the command called node and then you say what script you want to run and that is our right here it's our server running it could be on any PC it doesn't have to be anything special it doesn't I don't think it takes much I mean I'm not trying to serve hackaday or anything so this is very very uh, low uh, um, low CPU um, yeah, you can also use other things like Python, Apache with PHP, or IIS with ASP.NET, MVC, and things like that. But this is what I use because it's something cool, something new to, to play with. And it seems to work okay, as you saw. Uh, so let's talk a bit about that, more about this diagram here, how it actually works. So we'll start with the browser. So the web browser, as you saw earlier, where do we go? So let's leave him out here so we can see him. So the web browser is right here, and he get this page from this 100 right here. This 100 is the IP address of the Node.js server. So this is not the ESP module, this is not a Wi-Fi module. This is the Node.js running the web server. He is serving the pages so let me show you the yeah basically he he runs that server.js and he when when he when someone did this on a browser it will ask that server.js give me the index html and he will actually send send out the index html and that's what we see over here and along with the index html it also uh, within that page if we do a few source here Within that page, I ask for jQuery directly from googleapi.com, and then I ask for index.js. And index.js is the guy that actually does the handling for all these buttons. So when you click one of these, there's a script in index.js. Oh, it's not quite readable here in the browser. I'll show you later. So those scripts is the one that actually talks back through the internet to the device itself, to the module, to the ESP module and the ESP module will respond back with the data and then the data is sent back to the browser and the browser is you know when you see the the one right here is coming all the way from the browser to Node.js to the device back to Node.js and back to the browser so I think that we covered all this parser says interact with index.html yeah I think we talked about all this and the next step, so like I said earlier, is that what I want is to eliminate this polling. Um, maybe with WebSockets, I'm not sure yet. Um, leave me a comment if you guys know how to do this, because I would love to be able to just basically not press anything here. This will be a sitting, a page that's sitting around in here, and I will press the button, and the, the page will respond saying, hey, somebody press that button. That would be awesome. Um, the code, all, all the code that I have here is available on GitHub to share. Uh, feel free to use it and hopefully share back if you made improvements and uh, ask me any questions if you got any questions. That's about it. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.